All right, now that we have the fins all dry on um, our body tube, we're going to put in our rail buttons and our engine retainer. Um, for our rail buttons, we have two different kinds. We have this two-part one that has just a screw and the rail button, and this will go in the aft. And then we have a three-part set, which will go in the uh, front end of the rocket. And um, this part will sit on the inside flush with the edge, and then these screw in together. Um, first, just to keep the shock cord out of the way, I've got some paper towels here. We're just going to ball it up. You can use newspaper if you want, and that will keep the uh, shot cord from falling out on us. Uh, we want the rail buttons to be in the center of these two fins, so we'll have to put a measurement down. I've got a flexible ruler here. The span between these is four inches, so we'll mark it at the two. I've got a steel angle. Um, nice thing about these is the angle will be straight to your tube. So you don't really only need one mark. Hold that in place. One line. Down. Alright, so for the back end here, we've got like I said, that screw needs to go into the, uh, the rear centering ring, so we need to figure out exactly how far back, how far recessed it is. And here I've got, it's recessed a quarter inch, so we'll mark a quarter inch on here, right on our line. And we will drill a hole um, just forward of that. Um, here I've got a 5 16th inch bit. It's rolling. really doesn't need to go all that deep. The screw isn't very long and you still need to get the rail button through it. So then we loop the rail button on. Here's a screwdriver. Um, also I should note with uh, rail buttons there's two different sides to it. One's got a chamfer on it to fit the screw head so that it sits flush. Then we screw that in. Um, you don't want to make it too tight because the rail button will need to spin still. For the front end, um, we will be having the coupler or the electronics bay. Um, so you want to make sure that where you put this second uh, rail button is not going to interfere. Um, this is an 8 inch coupler, so we'll put it about a little over 4 inches down from the end.
Um, for this one, you'll want to use a uh, 3 16th bit. And so I gotta switch this out here. And there's not really much to the back of this, so I'll go through real quick. <laughs> put this back through. And for this one you'll want to mix up some um, either epoxy or Loctite. I've got some uh, JP Weld epoxy here. And we'll use this for the retainer as well. Alright, now we're just going to get a little tiny dab inside this hole here. We don't want to get it on the actual rail button. And again, put the chamfered end in. And screw that tight. But not too tight. You want that to spin freely too. And also, you'll want to put some in this back one. I had forgotten to do that. So. A little dab inside the hole. Screw that back down. Okay. Now that we have our epoxy mixed up, we'll also put on our retainer. Um, this back end, we're going to want to scuff it up with some sandpaper. Um, just about three eighths of an inch is all. Just to give it a little more. grip for the epoxy. Take our stick and the retainer fits on pretty tight already so we'll just kind of make thin smudge. We take our retainer, the back end, slide it on. And there you have your retainer on. Right. If there's any uh, epoxy that's oozed out, I don't have a lot. I didn't use very much, but you'll just take a paper towel or a Q-tip. Just wipe it down. Um, also make sure you check the inside because you can't have any bumps for the motor casing that will go in there. Screw on the end and there you have your retainer.